solver. So just a clarification, actually I already saw this is using uh, Monte Carlo, which is just like doing random moves. So yeah, let's just continue from where I left off in the previous um, stream. So yeah, so like we have previously done some AIs, like random AI, just do random moves. Monte Carlo AI doing the moves uh, up, down, left, right, and then playing through randomly for a certain number of games in order to find out which gives the highest score. And that was the move that will be selected. And yeah, it, it reached quite a high score with even just Monte Carlo. So now what I'm trying to do is the Monte Carlo tree search based AI, which is you add in the explore exploit. So let me go back to the Wikipedia article that I was basing it on. I mean, it originally came from like a paper. So we need to come up with this expression where we have explore term, which is like the value. So typically this explore term in a two player game will be something like the win percentage, like you win five times out of 15 times, then that will be the expl um, exploit term, which says how good this particular move you should choose it. It's not, oh, hello. Yeah, so I was recently interested in in doing this AI solver for this 2048 game. Have you played it before? Yeah. I, no, it's, 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 I, let me just show you. Yeah. So I've decided to code out an AI for this. Yeah. So this is the game. Yeah. So you need to like form like 2048 like, like this. I think you should have seen this before. It was quite popular a while back. Yeah. So, so it was quite quite cool. Someone introduced me this uh, problem that you need to use, you need to solve this. Yeah. So yeah, if we just do random moves, we will die pretty quickly and we will probably not, not progress very fast. Yeah. So this just, oh wow, <laughs> I'm actually going to 256. I expected to die at like 1 to 8 or something. Yeah. So that was like how 204 is played. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, let's see whether it has died already. Yeah, so you reach 2048 with just 20 moves per. Um, it just tries each. Yeah, it's like a solver. Yeah. So, um, I'm trying to go one step further. I'm trying to go to solve this. Um, so, 2048 can be easily solved. Now, I'm trying to do 8196. So, it's like four times the difficulty because. Um, yeah, <laughs> you need to do all the way to 8196, you need to combine 2048, uh, you need to combine it twice to become 4096, and then you need to combine 4096 twice, uh, one time in order to be 8196, so 8192. Yeah, so, um, I mean, one way to do this will be to like increase the number of tries here, like to a thousand or something, I'm, I think that might work. Yeah, but I'm trying to do another method where uh, we add in an exploit and exploit them. So like you have, a, so in, instead of like having only like a fixed number of tries per arm, uh, arm as in this case per move. So like, for example, you try 20 times per, per move up, down, left and right. Okay. Instead of doing that, uh, instead we prioritize the, the arm or prioritize the move that is currently like um, the best in terms of like some value here that determines how good uh, the value is. Exploring different sizes. No, I'm not really exploring different sizes. I'm trying to improve the algorithm to do the solver. Yeah, so because you see the, the limit here is your number of um, compute time that you have to solve it. So if we were to increase the number of tries, you evaluate each move. So just some background, uh, Monte Carlo is like random sampling, uh, making random moves all the way until you die or like you reach a certain um, number of moves and then you do some form of evaluation for the for the value of that state. So I'm thinking instead of doing uh, 20 tries per move, maybe we just like, you know, we do it such that the number of moves is kind of limited. Like um, you prioritize the arm that gives you the highest returns. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, uh, 
let's do this part here first. Oh, the max step here. Max step because uh, initially when I did this uh, Monte Carlo AI, I let the game run all the way to the end. But um, for 2048, you can go up to like maybe a thousand different, basically your depth of the game, the number of moves that you make after that certain, that current bot state, it could go up to the thousands. So evaluating to a thousand took a little too much time. So I just kept it at 10 moves. So after 10 moves, I just check to see what's the score. The score is given like, like over here, like once you combine breaks, you get a certain score. I see what's the score after 10 moves. And then based on that, I see whether that state is good or not. So by like just performing 20 random moves for each of the bot states. So I like perform like a, an action first, like up. Then I do random evaluation, 20 moves for each of the bot states. After you do up, down, left, and right. Then based on that, you get the, the move that returns the best score. That is actually good enough to solve 2048. Quite reliably, actually. Yeah, and it solves it pretty fast. Like within a minute, you can solve the game. Yeah. And each of the moves take less than like half a second. I think it maybe 0.1 second is super fast. Yeah, to solve this is super fast. So now I'm trying to think of how to do like a prioritized search. Yeah, rather than searching the each of the moves individually uh, with the same number of uh, tries i'm trying to prioritize the search such that such that i focus on the arms or focus on the moves that give me the highest returns more yeah subject to an explore exploit constraint which is given by this so it's something like uh, the exploit means like the current move is good the explore is like if you never explore if you never choose this move for quite some time then this term will be larger and larger, and then you will eventually choose it. Yeah, so that is, this is quite a useful way of doing um, prioritized search. In fact, I think we also use this kind of algorithm. Uh, highest returns means like the scores. So like after 10, that what's the, what's the total score of the game? So if that move gives the highest score, then that will be the, yeah, you go on for up to 10 moves. I mean, it, it depends on the it depends on the num uh, the max step here. Yeah, so this is actually called Monte Carlo tree search. It's a uh, quite an interesting idea where you use this uh exploit and explore term over here. Okay, in order to like select uh the best move to to try. So it's something like you know if you go to a uh, hawker center and you have like a chicken rice store and a duck rice store. So let's say you don't know how the chicken rice or the duck rice tastes like. So I just try randomly first. <laughs> I try a chicken rice and oh, not bad. Three out of five stars. Then maybe the next time around, I'm like, okay, I didn't try the duck rice store. Okay, I'll try the duck rice now. Oh, it's four out of five. Not bad. So the next time around, when you go back to the same place, uh, since you tried both of them one time, then uh, duck rice tastes better than chicken rice in your opinion. You will try the, chick the duck rice store because the exploit term is higher. Then you try it then oh actually now it's like oh actually it's not bad it's still four out of five but then you try duck rice for 10 days after that i think you get a bit like sick of duck rice you're thinking like maybe i should give the chicken rice store another try so you try chicken rice and now the chicken rice is rated five out of five so, so you know this simple equation can actually do a quite a complex dynamic of like what what like store to go to eat based on like your previous uh experiences with it with, with, with the food and then like after a certain delay in time you will then go and um, explore again those uh, moves that previously you thought weren't that great maybe you give it another chance you explore it again so uh, i think there's some promise to use this kind of approach to get a better solver that can potentially hit 8192 uh no it's not exactly brute force brute force i will do for every single uh, I will do for every single move. I will, if you were to do a brute force solution for two zero four six, I uh, sorry two zero four eight. Um, supposing that there are a thousand branches, a uh, thousand depth of the tree, and each tree, each uh at each node of the tree or at each game state, you do four. You have four different moves that you can do, right? So.
Yeah, but anyway, 4 to the power of 1000. Yeah, so if you have to do brute force, you need to calculate 4 to the power of 1000, which is, uh, yeah, it's about 600 digits long. Yeah, I used the Wolfram calculator the last time. Yeah, so if you have to do a brute force, you will evaluate all these possible bot states. And then you will find the, the best possible one. That's brute force. Yeah, so over here it's not because uh, we do like explore, like after you make a first move, you do like random random moves all the way for the next 10 moves okay and then you see what's the score then you like use that as a proxy to how good it is yeah so you know there's no way you can evaluate for the power of 1000 bot states so we have to like try to compress the amount of uh, information that we can get yeah it's, it's, it's still an estimation though it's not an exact solve because there's just too many states to, to do it um yeah, I was just interested in this. Uh I'm I'm actually trying to, to do an AI solver for this. I'm quite interested in it right now. Yeah, my friend introduced me this one. Uh the aim was to solve for 2048, but I think I'm I can solve for more. So I'm challenging myself to solve a bit more. Yeah. I find that uh that like solving simple games actually is quite an interesting way to like practice AI. Yeah. Uh, I'm also intending to do a neural network approach to solve 2048, like using this thing called DeepQ network. So yeah, I'll stream that another time, like I'll do live coding for that. <laughs> yeah, it's quite interesting. I mean, because 2048 is inherently random. Like you see, after you make a move, right? After you make a move up, down, left, or right, the next block here that appears, this 2, it could appear anywhere that is empty. So so because of that, actually the 2048 game also has a chance of a 4 break appearing, 10% chance for 4 to appear. Yeah, but in this simulator, it's not, it's not, it didn't take into account that. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of, uh, there's a bit of randomness here because you, you don't know where your next break will appear. So that's, that's the difficulty of 2048. And that's why a random solver like this can work quite well for especially for this kind of randomness yeah okay now it, let me try to to do something here so what i wanted to do is do an initial exploration of each valid move Let's say five. Four move in valid moves. Four five in range initial tries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go ahead. I'm, I'm looking at your question now. And you have this solver on a separate window. Yeah, you can solve the game. Yeah, so like for example over here, I could make this bot state like 824, 464, 82. I could make this. Yeah, so uh, if you look here, you have this thing called current state here. Yeah. So if you were to print out current state, it's like that. So it's, it's a tuple of the bot state here. So what we could do is we could. we could do like this so like state equals to whatever bot position you have okay um your current score okay i mean it's a bit hard to like over here the current score is three four eight and then the history you can just press blank so over here you just need to fill up yeah so zero 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 Eight two zero zero. It's a little manual, but you know, if if you were to code this game yourself, like over here and to play the game here, you could get the bot state um easily because you can just pick the variable that stores the bot state bot state. But uh, if let's say you were to play on another side, you want to know what 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 it is, you have to key in manually all these numbers here four sixty four eight two. 
and then this will be my state, right? So I can call this the current state. Or rather, I, I can do initial state. So I can solve it like that. Uh, for one. My initial state becomes 0, 0 because over here is like that. Uh, let me just put this here. So this is my initial state 0, 0, 0, 8, 2, 0, 0, 4, 0, 0, 0, 4, 64, 8, 2. Then you can yeah, uh, I mean if you want to do like this thing in like like you would you can actually do something like that for chess also for go. Although it won't be very good because the chess and go are uh deterministic games. Like um they don't have any random element involved. So the the moves that you can make is quite certain what the, the value would be. So uh Monte Carlo approach. Uh, may not do so well because like if you could like have some form of like um understanding of how good the bot state is based on your past experience yeah you'll be okay actually you can also use monte carlo to do that it's just that because the number of moves for like a chess game or, or a go game are so much like in a go bot 19 by 19 it's like 380 over moves that you can choose from here in uh, 2048 you only have four moves to choose from so doing Monte Carlo is okay for 2048, but it's not that great for like chess and stuff. You, you will need some form of heuristic to evaluate the bot state. Okay, so over here, uh, I didn't really print out what, what move to do next, but uh, we could we, we could just print out the we could just print out the first move. So if you're interested in the next move. Yeah, maybe I could do a, a function to do that. So let's say like define get next move. Okay, so we could do it like that. Bot. Yeah, we, we actually we could just make the, the score zero like that. And then I could then Yeah, I could just do a function right now to, to do that. Okay, I could do an initial state like that. Okay, and then we don't need to do this loop anymore. We could just do like that. You don't actually, I, I don't need a separate function. I could just use this. Yeah. It's not, not that difficult. I just put in this best move. If first move. Or actually, I can just print out the best move here. So, best move up. So, I should go up. I, my score will be 356 after that. Uh, so, 8282, 864. So, we, we could do that for the next one. 8282. Yeah. I, Oh, the bot state is this one. This is bot bot state. B O A R D bot state. Not 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 bot state. Yeah. So yeah, we could just keep editing this uh bot state and and do it here, which is uh kind of irritating because you need to do this a thousand times in order to get to two zero four eight. Yeah. Two zero four eight is two times one zero two four. So given that only the two tau appears every turn. You need to do the operation one zero two four times in order to get two zero four eight. Yeah, so this game actually takes quite long to play. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's it's massive. Yeah, the yeah. But, yeah, sometimes when I play two zero four eight, I just randomly do the first few moves anyway. Yeah. So anyway, uh, let's try to go back to to what I was trying to do today. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, actually, I'm, I'm, I quite like that. Uh, like you asked me some questions and stuff. I'm actually quite keen to explain. Uh, because actually, I'm quite familiar with like Monte Carlo tree search. This is not exactly Monte Carlo tree search. We are just trying to do the Monte Carlo tree search. Um, explore, exploit, constraint for the first move that we choose. 
okay because i figured that uh if you were to do for the subsequent moves as well for the entire graph like typically you should do like the the explore exploit for each single branch and then you go to your child node expand one node do a random playoff and then back propagate your wins backwards so this is monte carlo tree search uh, but given that there are a thousand depths in this, the tree is a depth of 1,000. Yeah. I mean, I could probably still do like Monte Carlo tree search, I guess. Uh, it's not that necessary, actually. Mm. I mean, who knows? Uh, maybe if this doesn't work out, I can implement the whole Monte Carlo tree search. Yeah. But yeah, it won't be a two-player version. It'll be a Monte Carlo tree search single-player version where the single player chooses at every level of the tree, chooses to the endpoint, then we get the score, and then we update the score backwards like that, and so on. Yeah. Okay, but um, that will complicate the code quite a bit. So I'm I'll try not to do that first. I'll just try to do uh, a Monte Carlo tree search for only the or rather the exploit exploit constraint only for the first move that we are doing for the bot yeah according to this formula this uh this is called the ucb1 formula upper confidence trees okay upper confidence bound ucb1 formula and uct is upper confidence bound applied for trees actually very tech term i i just i rather they just call it exploit exploit formula because it's really like this is the exploit term and this is the explore term right yeah exploit explore term yeah, it's more, more like exploit, explore. Yeah, to me, this is how it looks like. Exploit and explore. And then you balance the two and then you can choose your moves accordingly to prioritize the move, the first move that gives you the highest return or the highest reward. Okay, so I just want to like give my um, AI some head start. I'll do five moves each for up, down, left, right. Forever valid moves, okay? That is in there. So we could do that here. Perform Monte Carlo tree search and add in here. Yeah, so this will give some hit start to like my action tries and my score. Okay, so after that. Then we pack the exploration constant to the initial spot state score. Okay, this is a little tricky because like after I get my score over here, okay, I will need to make sure that I don't have it so overwhelming that I don't explore at all. So I need to pack my C over here such that I think what I can do is I could pack it to the maximum action score yeah, I could do this yeah so we get the maximum of the action score divided by action tries which is the average the, the average score we can get the average score here so we could okay. since we are doing five moves each okay Yeah, I think we could do this in the same for loop here. So else action tries. So we convert the move to index. Move to index. Move. Otherwise, we just put it to initial tries number of times. Yeah. If not valid, still increment the initial tries variable for that move to avoid division by zero. Okay, and we do an initial exploration of. Oh, yeah, thanks for watching. Yeah, main and bananas. Yeah, do an initial exploration of each move. Perform the Monte Carlo simulation for each move and then add the score and tries to each move. Yeah, so after I'm done with like my my this 2048 um trainer, uh, I will probably release this code on GitHub. So 
so that uh, you can try it out also. Okay, we tag it to the maximum. Okay, so maybe what we can do here is like this. We could have a max score. So over here, get the maximum score after max that move. So max score equals to max of the max score and uh, Monte Carlo score. Yeah, so that would do it. So over here, we could just get. In fact, I don't need to do a minimum anymore. So you know, C could just be max score. And then after that, the the num tries number of times twenty, right? So out of twenty times, we do the exploit, exploit, straight off like that. Okay, let's just try it out. Max index not defined in uh, line 39. Oh, okay, because here is max index. But actually what I have here is just move. So max index equals to move to index move. Okay, so uh, now it's working, the minimax is working already, but I'm more interested right now, it's not the outcome, I'm more interested to see what is my action heuristic, which is this one here. Or rather I could actually at the end of the, at the end of my, uh, this Monte Carlo, I could print out Action tries and action score. Yeah, I can just copy this code in the here. Yeah, so that means I will print out at each state was the number of tries of each action I do. So 10, 12, 9, 9. So given that I did. 20 actions split among here, amongst here. So you can see that the second action was valued more. Actually, it's not bad. The split is not bad. Oh, hang on a minute. Why is my. Oh, yeah, yeah it's okay. Action score is here. Yeah, actually, the action score can kind of uh, looks very similar. Maybe what I should do is action score divided by like, so it's like number of tries for each move. I will just put number of tries and then and then here will be average score. Yeah, that, that should do the trick. So we start off with like five. Yeah, so here's 11, 12, 12. So this one will be chosen. 12, 12. It looks to me like the exploit exploit um, term seems to value the moves kind of almost equally. Like if you look here, the, the exploit exploit kind of make it, makes it quite similar. So maybe I would like to try to tone down a bit. Okay, to like make the value of the state more than the so we do a bit less exploration so maybe we try num tries of 50 and we come up num tries of 100 see how it goes yeah 100 is really slow yeah so it looks to me like it splits the oh there we go okay well it's not True because this is a in, this is an invalid move, I think. 
No, but if it's invalid, it should be five. It's a valid move. Yeah, so maybe I should print out the best section also. Let's print the score, the, print the best move. Yeah, looks looks like um, it's balancing the exploit exploit not too bad, but it's like exploring everything almost. Oh, look at that! This is a clear winner. Okay, I I quite like this already. Yeah, the clear winner. So if we if we take this as the explore constant, then this one would be. No, it's not too bad actually. Okay, now's the time to just you know do a fast track. So let me just put a debug over here. So debug equals to true. So this is for the printing of stuff. So let's see. Okay, uh, if debug, then we print this. If debug, then we print this. Okay, so now maybe we put debug to be false first. Okay, so I would like to try with the similar kind of constraint, I guess, as the earlier one. So uh, the earlier method, we did 20 tries for each of the moves. So in this case, what we'll do is initial tries is 5. So that will take up 20 moves already. Okay, so uh, to be fair, we should try uh, 60 more moves, so that is like 20 per move total. Okay, let's try. It's way slower than the, the Monte Carlo part, uh, but it's okay. I wonder if it's enough though to, to get to 8192. Uh, the slow part is here because um, at every move uh, we need to do this for loop to check what's the maximum value or rather to take the maximum uh, this uh, I guess this extra for loop and also maybe this mp dot where I'm not sure whether this mp dot where takes up more time than this this simple for loop here maybe do numpy array max value element index ah there's a numpy dot art max ah that's all i need actually numpy dot art max Yeah, why not? I use numpy dot arc max. I don't have to worry about the the moves that are invalid because because it will not be chosen anyway. Because uh, over here the action score here. Else this one and then the action score we could just make it. make this like maybe equals to minus a huge number so that we will never choose the invalid action so yeah we could do numpy dot arc max okay, let's just pause this first wonder if this will improve the runtime and then over here instead of doing num this one is where best move index equals to numpy dot arc max or rather np.arcmax 
action tries. Yeah, we could do it. We could just do that. Compile the up max action heuristic, and then you know, let me just debug this to we'll just see how how the output looks like. So there's an average form minus means that it's an invalid move. Just wondering why the number of tries is 10 for an invalid move because the extra tries is 5, right? So action tries of that will be 5. Oh, because I didn't put a continue over here. Yeah, if I put a continue there, then it will avoid evaluating the rest of that. Yeah, so it'll be 5 only. Yeah. I think the average score is minus 2, which is okay, which is good. Oh, see, uh, export, export is, is doing its job, it's exploring certain things differently. Looks like it's working. Looks like it's working. So the the node that's explored the least will have the lowest average score. The node that's explored the most will have the highest average score. Is that twenty 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 means all is about the same. I wonder if this will work though, because like. Interesting. Okay, I'm I'm done with debugging. So now what's left to do is to is to run it, and then like maybe if this works, I'll try with uh, even an even higher amount. So just to take note, the earlier one, the uh the earlier AI that used Monte Carlo tree search, sorry the just using Monte Carlo, achieved two zero point eight. So if this Monte Carlo tree search based AI. If exploit and exploit doesn't achieve 2048, it's inferior. So you see it's a little slow. See 16, 68. I mean to just give you a taste of how this looks like. We just uh run this. Look at that. Look at the speed. It's way faster. You can take out the best move. Just like that. You can see that oh you see it's zooming by. So indeed just uh doing this thing it's way faster than this actually just still thinking why is this the case so you know if we were to Uh, if we were to just put the initial tries to be 20 and then the number tries to be 0, it should be about the same. Division by 0, so... But if my range one try here is zero. I don't need this. Don't need this. Why is there a division by zero? So I guess this thing wouldn't even be performed, right? Like if I were to take this out, oh, it's, it's not here. It's score divided by num try. Okay. 
is over here, this num tracer. We can put a zero here. So this one should be actually. Oh, I know why it's slow already. Because this playthrough of initial tries, I did it even here also. Oh, okay, okay. So this playthrough already does for like that number of times. No wonder it's slower. Because it actually averages out over here. So I oh okay so at least I figure out the problem. So I don't need a, a I don't need a loop here. So this playthrough already does a for loop. Or uh, actually, I mean, could just do one here. Yeah. Because I still kind of like the for loop here so that we can keep track of where the action is. Yeah. Because we don't want to do this playthrough. Okay, here actually this one can do initial tries because we can do the initial tries fully. But this one we should do only one. So that's probably where the slowdown came from. One and Monte Carlo score. Yeah, it's much faster now. Oh, but it looks like it's if I just do only the initial tries. Let us take a look. What's it printing up? It just moves up. It did not take into account the fact that there are some that is negative here. Because initial tries here, everything, everyone gets 20 tries. Regardless of whether it's a good move or a bad move. Yeah. So unless I change my heuristic to take the, the highest average score. So everyone gets the highest, uh, everyone gets an equal number of moves because I added it in over here. And that didn't make it. Uh, do well so maybe instead of doing the moves do the move with the it wrong best move is the highest average score so we can do instead of doing action tries we can just do, do an on action score so uh, then now now we have a game okay because it doesn't get stuck so if let's say I were to just okay, so if I do initial tries as 20, it's the same as what I did earlier on with my previous method, where I don't have any exploit exploit term. I just simply do 20 tries. I simply do 20 tries per per move. And let us see where we end up with. Okay, I'm quite curious to see where this ends up. So this is with exploit exploit. Eh, sorry, this is without exploit exploit. Because I just simply do 20 tries per move. Looks pretty good already actually. Oh, we ended at 1024. I mean, as a comparison, let's run this. So it means that uh, with 20 tries, it may not be, it may not be able to reach 2048. Okay, that's not maybe that 2048 was just a lucky split. Yeah, here only reach 1024. So yeah, this just to get a rough gauge of how the performance is without doing the exploit exploit on screen. And then later I'll run again with the exploit exploit. Explore exploit. <laughs> Keep pronouncing it wrongly. And then we see how it goes. So um the performance for this solver is also a little bit of luck driven because the the position of where the two is is really random. Oh look at that. It actually achieved a higher score. 
Uh, maybe it's luck dependent. Let's try one more time at the bottom because actually the code for the bottom should be exactly the same as the top. Uh, wow, this one reached <laughs> 30,000. Mm. Yeah, this is all for it. Looks quite good actually. Okay, now we do the one at the bottom, which is the. This is for the Monte Carlo Tree Search Based AI. So. I wonder whether it will work. Yeah. The runtime is about the same, which means that the algorithm that I'm doing right now it's it's not too bad. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it looks like it's working. Oh, why though? Am I doing something wrong? I mean, here is the same, right? Like I'm taking the move with the highest action score, which is We yeah, actually do this action score divided by action price. Yeah, take the average score rather than the topmost action score because sometimes you can have very high score. No, but actually this should be the same because the action price are all going to be initial all the action price are gonna be the same, so there shouldn't be a difference. No idea, yeah. <laughs> Just got to hope for the best. This time it stopped at 14,000, so you know if it passed 14,000, it's a good sign. Oh, okay. Alright, looks like this is working already. So... Yeah, it looks like it's working. So this was with 20 search per move. And then we see whether we can have a higher score um, using the exploit exploit term. Wow, it's, it's actually pretty high. Yeah, this might be a lucky lucky break. Oh, look at that, 2048. So that was with random moves like that. Yeah. So maybe now if I were to try, I'll just do a debug as true. I want to see what, what is printed out here. Okay, good. Okay, so now we do Okay, initial tries can be like 5, and then maybe the num tries can be like 60. Let's see what it's printed up. Okay, so you can see that the it's exploring based on like in proportion to like the score. So you can see uh, kind of like the trade off here, like here, explores 45 times. So it turns out that like having the exploration constant to be the be the max of the the Monte Carlo score is a, is a good way to make them explore more because this actually the case uh, logarithmic logarithmic log logarithmic uh, I can't pronounce it logarithmic log logarithmically 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 okay yeah it decays to the logarithm okay because there's a log term here and there's a square term here, so this doesn't expand as fast as this this term here. Looks good. The action split looks good. Looks quite nice. Like thirty one, you see over here this six nine nine, so it explores a bit more here. So it actually prioritizes and allocates the the move to the um it it allocates more search time to the move that is most promising. Like, but over here you can see that all of the moves look equally promising which means that um, yeah, they haven't really found the best move I guess uh, but the average score, if we go by average score we should be doing well okay, did I get the answer already? oh actually it's doing well it reached all the way until 2048, hooray! Okay, so actually this exploit exploit um does provide a bit of like uh, 
bonus to do it. So actually, if we were to be able to do this uh, Monte Carlo tree search for each and every node that we have, rather than just the top node, it would be actually uh, more advantageous, okay? We could do the full procedure, actually. We could do like all the way to the bottom, take a child node, because actually each of this simulation, um, the heuristic, okay, the heuristic, is actually going to be the same. Like it's going to be the child nodes. Uh, sorry, it's going to be the child nodes uh, total value, which is easily obtainable in two zero four eight. We could actually probably implement the entire Monte Carlo tree search procedure for each and every node here, so that at each layer we can use the Monte Carlo tree search to do the right choice or so, and then this will help to choose the correct correct kind of moves all the way down the tree and like help to get the better um, action score at the top. But um, I think that will be for another day. Let's just try okay, with the debug as boss. Okay, initial tries, I can put a five first. Okay, now I make my num tries. Let's say I do about, so that was 60. Let's say I do about 200 moves. So maybe like that. Initial try can just press five. So that means this will explore, okay, the total number of moves. It explore a total of two hundred moves. Yeah, actually, just put two hundred. So, um, it explores two hundred total split among all of the moves. Okay, and each node we explore them five times at the beginning to just gauge how valuable they are. Or we could just explore them one time to gauge how valuable and let the algorithm do its job. Uh, I guess the main crux of the algorithm is in the explore exploit part. So yeah, let's see how high this goes. I have a feeling that, you know, I probably should do Monte Carlo tree search for all the nodes. So I will need to find a way to store the node state somewhere. Okay, because the node state for the bot state itself, this node state here, I will definitely need to store it um, so that each of these nodes okay, can have a reference ID. Yeah, but actually the issue with doing Monte Carlo tree search like this is that after here, after each node here, when I do an action, I don't exactly go to one node. There's a probability that I might go to this node or another node or another node. Yeah, that's also why I cannot do Monte Carlo tree search here. Um, because the game doesn't allow for it, um, there is no like true state that I would actually go to when um, when I play the game due to the random nature of where the two appears. So yeah, looks like Monte Carlo tree search cannot be used after all for this game. Uh, but let's just see like whether the Monte Carlo like exploit exploit just for the first move itself could lead to some improvements in this game so this is uh, this is with 200 searches oh actually it turned out to be worse hmm. interesting okay interesting is it because i searched too many let's just do the debug here and see what went wrong so it looks like um it does prioritize certain values more. Looks okay to me actually. Could it be just a fluke? Yeah, but in the end you see over here it looks like it kind of prioritizes all of them almost equally. Yeah, it could have been a fluke. Yeah, it's prioritizing like almost almost equally for all of them actually. Like you see the moves here. But it hasn't really found a clear winner for this. It could mean that my exploit explore constant is not rising as fast as it should be.
But if that's the case, it's fine also. It means that there's no clear loser for the move. But then that shouldn't result in a very poor performance, right? Because I should still be able to do it well just by taking the average score and taking the highest average score should should ideally give me the right answer already. Let's see whether this reaches two zero four eight. Yeah. I think getting eight one nine two for this game is quite tough. Yeah, it, it gets exponentially tougher the higher you go up. Like that's why maybe people kept it at two zero four eight, because um, this game is tough enough at two zero four eight. So now it's exploring all the nodes almost equally. Okay, over here there's a significant difference. Yeah, this this one is way better than the rest. So. Yeah, I guess this happened more and more uh, towards the end because of the way that the score works. But it's fine. I mean, if you can get a score like that, it probably means that you are doing something right. Yeah, I wonder if we could do like some sub problems kind of thing to solve this. It's a little tough. Oh, it's, it has promise. Uh, it has reached twenty eight thousand. So maybe just now was like a fluke. Sometimes, sometimes stuff like that happens. I reached thirty thousand. Uh, actually, it's almost doing the same thing as like doing all the searches equally towards the end already. Depends on luck whether you get it or not. Uh, that's something that is not ideal actually. Yeah, because like that, then the exploit exploit kind of loses its meaning towards the end. Uh. It's just relying on search to drive it through. Like towards the end, it's not really differentiating that much. Which is not ideal at all. So I need to do something about this. It means that the exploit exploit constant, the trade off is not balanced well enough for this to happen. I think it's because of this. Like here, 350581. The difference in average score is uh, insufficient. Okay, to. Okay, not too bad. At least a two zero four eight came out. Okay, so uh, it turns out that this is not that great yet. But it's to be expected. I mean, what 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 do you expect, right? Um, where was I? I would like to print out max score. Exploration factor. So it's 30 here, 72 over here, which is like way higher than the max score. So the it prioritizes exploration a lot more. So maybe maybe that's why like the highest possible score towards the end be very very high that's why everything became equal okay it's 2744 so it beats off this average score and yeah so maybe rather than using the top score for to pack the exploration constant i could use the average score C equals to max. Yeah, we could do this. 
maximum average Monte Carlo score. Let's see. So now 65.6, 58.4 is about there. It matches about there. So you can see a bigger discrepancy of the. Yeah, so just by using the average out of five tries, it gives a bigger discrepancy between the factors. Right here, the exploration factors 466. I could either do the the term on the right side, exploration factor, or I could divide the average score here by another factor, 466. But I either way, either way it will be the same. It's either you multiply this, so where's the equation? It's either you might multiply this with the average score, or you divide this term here, the exploit term, with the average score. So it's okay. I just need to make sure that this score here okay, is similar to this average score here. Because if this is too high, everyone will be kind of equal. It's two eight, so yeah, it looks equal. Six seven six. Why is it so high compared to the? It's like quite high, is it one zero four six compared to the average score later on that we get? So it'd be a lucky first few. Now, okay, over here. But it does give some form of prioritization already, and I kind of like this. Okay, but over here, when we see 2365, actually, this one is much higher. Okay, but the right side term, because of this exploration factor, it can kind of being buffered up. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I should divide the left side by this factor. If I divide this, then this term can rise up. But it doesn't make a difference, you see. If I divide, then it's also going to be the same, right? I need to figure out why it's not differentiating well here. Like here, 2683. Here we get 2690. This should be prioritized more. Unless this came later in the run. Oh, but we do have like significant uh, factors here, like three, four, five, two. Yeah, no wonder. And then this one overwhelms the first two. But towards the end, all is about the same already. Why? I see over here all is about the same one one eight five six. It matches with the average. Uh, it's an art to figure out what's the right exploration factor to use for this. Because if I use too low, right, then this term here would would um would overwhelm the, the term on the right. Then we won't explore that much. But right now it's exploring all quite uniformly. Oh, is it still counting? Oh, it's still counting. Yeah, but it's kind of surprising why it's like not really um, getting the right factors. Like it's not really performing the exploit exploit at all towards the end. It's like just how do I put it? It's just evaluating each of the moves individually. Oh, there is some variation here. Mm, this is about 100 score difference. This is really huge, yo. 3, 4, 6, 1, 4. Maybe it's an overestimate. So it turns out that there's some form of branching uh, and prioritizing the, the leading move when the exploration factor is much higher than the than the venture average. And let's, let's take a look again. So the ones that have a huge discrepancy, like here, is when the exploration factor is 105. And then here's one zero two one one one. Oh, when the exploration factor is lower, it's a huge discrepancy. Like this one 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 four. When it's lower, then oh, so it means that the if the exploration factor is too high. Okay, if it's too high, then it will kind of like make the exploration term too buffered up, and then everyone will be equal. So maybe the trick here is to 
rather than make the exploration term the maximum here. We could make this exploration constant to be the average. Okay, I, I, I got it already. So we, we could do an average. So I always like averages because I feel that averages like kind of fix the data and like fix the middle point very well. So So we could have this action score. Okay, see the action score? Other than this minus 10,000, right? We could do because I don't want this to appear right now. What I could do is I could have a separate variable here, which we call it exploration tries and exploration score. Then over here we could do it. I won't take up too much running time actually. Then over here. So the expression constant will be the average Monte Carlo score of the initial trials. So C equals to Yeah, something like that. Let's see whether this works. Hello Andrew. Hi Monte. <laughs> Lord, no 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 that's the name of the method. <laughs> this method here. Lol. Okay, I wonder if it has evaluated. Oh, wow. 4096. You reached 4096. Nah, I'm not having <laughs> I'm trying to solve this 2048 game, this, this game here. Where, you know, you, you, you try to create uh, an AI that can like, hit 2048. I already, reached, I already did that. So now I'm trying to do 148192. So that you can hit it one nine two. So now if I do an average, if I were to do this, if I set the exploration factor to be the average of the score divided by tries of the first part here, this one to be the average of of whatever that is like the total score divided by number of tries in my initial in my initial tries. I wonder whether it will work better. So let's try. So. The discrepancy between the uh, moves per uh, is this discrepancy between the number of uh, tries in each arm or in each move has significantly increased once I did that. So I think that's a, a good way to do it. <laughs> it looked like no, I'm I'm from Singapore. No, <laughs> and and thanks for watching by the way. Uh, I'm just figuring out how to best optimize this uh this is called monte carlo tree search if you are interested you can look at it um this is uh, a way to do exploration and exploitation where you try to find the best move um but you don't want to just keep doing the best move all the time so you add in some element of exploration whereby if you don't try the move for a long enough amount of time then uh we try that move you know it's like um you are trying to eat different kinds of food. Sometimes you like chicken rice, sometimes you like duck rice. You eat chicken rice too much. Maybe sometimes you give duck rice a try. So uh, this is summarized um, in this equation here. So I'm just trying to optimize the C over here, which is the exploration parameter. Yeah, it's normally chosen empirically based on what is, uh, what, what is the left side and the right side of this equation. So let's see. I kind of like the exploration factor right now. It's like a balance of the initial exploration, what's the average score, and then from there we can set. You see over here, this is there's quite a high discrepancy right now. Let's go on further down. Oh no, it looks like, it's, like it's about the same here. 
But if it's about the same, it may just mean that there's no dominant factor. Yeah, but it cannot be about the same for every single thing. Like here is one five eight eight three. Is one five nine two five. Is it is really the average? Yes, yeah, that is not really giving much of a discrepancy. Like over here, like seventy three. There is some discrepancy. There's some discrepancy here. Like just one more try here. Yeah, it might also mean that my factor on the right decays too fast. Yeah, see at high numbers this doesn't really work out anymore. Yeah, it's not exactly evaluating the moves in the way that I would like to at this yeah. <laughs> nah, NASA is uh, very advanced security. Anyway, the stuff I'm doing is not really hacking. Uh, I, I know there are people who do that, but I think people who do that don't really stream how they hack, right? Uh, it's trade secrets. <laughs> yeah. But no, this is a, a very friendly AI meant to play this game of 2048. Yeah. <laughs> I see there's some discrepancy in the number of tries for each action here. It's up, down, left, and right. There's some discrepancy here. Which is good. I guess this is indication that there's some focus on some arms. Just that the focus is not done enough. It looks to me like it's being evaluated almost the same rate for each of the arms. Yeah, it's just too zero for it. It's not not too good. It's not too good. How can I improve this? I think I might have to change this formula, you know. But this one might come up too fast. Maybe, maybe, maybe I have to just divide this by 2. Now let's just see how it goes. Let's see, if I divide this by 2, ah, there we can see a very, very uh, huge difference in the exploration factor already. Like we explore things quite differently after I divide by 2. Here is about the same, so it's about yeah. So the experiment factor shouldn't be too high. But if I divide by two like that, this is okay because it's all about the same. All about the same, so it's fine. Ah, now there's discrepancy. Yeah, looks looks like there's uh. Higher discrepancy, I guess. But towards the end, you can see that it looks to me like it's almost all about the same. So that means the exploration term can time can tend to pick out towards the end. But over here, see, over here, there's a, a big difference. Seven four eight seven seven nine. This is seven nine two hundred. Looks like it's okay, yeah. With this exploration term, there's some, there's some varying variation of how how they find the right action. All these four values are about the same. Oh, I have no idea who's watching actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to get this done here. This is rather technical, yeah. Usually I stream game creation that's a bit lighter. <laughs> it's now game AI. But recently I've been interested in this. So I'm not from left wing or right wing. Which country are you talking about?
you know people doing speed runs and, and they like have some form of AI that does this and it might look like this but oh man even if the exploration factor is so low turns out that this doesn't really like because I think these numbers here are too big and because these numbers here are too big this exploration factor here is too large to give too large a discrepancy here Mm. Okay, I mean there's some discrepancy some in some places, but for most places there isn't, and it looks like it's about the same. So maybe uh divide by two is not enough. Maybe I need to divide by ten instead. Uh, it's like exploring everything almost equally when there's some discrepancy here. Over here, actually, it's okay because see, when there's a 200 discrepancy here, it evaluates eight times more. But I want to skew this, I want to skew this distribution more. Ah, this is not very good. This still ends up with 2048. I can't really comment on that because I don't really know uh, what is. What was the meaning of this left wing right wing for your context and yeah i mean i'm from singapore so there isn't exactly a left wing or right wing there's only the ruling party and the non-ruling party yeah let's see mm. maybe i'll try to do it Give a little more skill. Oh, now the skill is so huge. Nice. But I'm not too sure whether I skewed it a bit too much. Yeah, so it turns out that maybe the exploration factor needs to be small. I wonder if an exploration factor of 1 is enough. Yeah. I mean, given that the difference in the score is like close to a 1000 at the later parts, I'm thinking maybe I don't need to do such a huge factor here. I could maybe maybe use a smaller factor. I could maybe just put C equals to ten and see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't really have my much uh affiliation to any wing per se, yeah. I don't have much opinions on that. Yeah, but you know, as long as whoever supports um, doesn't do harm to people, it's fine. Yeah. Oh, look at that. The skill is so much. I like it. This looks to be a pretty good factor, actually. But towards the end, is there a skill or is it all the same towards here? If the number is too big, then okay. Here, the difference is not much, it's, accept it's acceptable. Here, there's a no big difference, too. When there's a difference, I it should have a skill like this kind of skill, yeah. I wonder if this will work better than the normal one. It uh, looks like over here the skill is not much already. Yeah. Oh, uh, Cleandra. Oh yeah, yeah. Thanks for watching. But <laughs> yeah, I know it's a looks a little boring because I'm trying to debug my own code. Yeah, it's it's more like choosing what this value of C is. Yeah. 
So I guess you appreciate it more if you if you try to code this out one time yourself. Yeah, it's actually quite an interesting art to do this. <coughs> Yeah, for a client, Raja, you said, can you be my mentor? Yeah, uh, sure. I mean, if you're talking about like programming stuff, I don't mind. Uh, you can just drop me any questions you want in the, in the chat. I'll try to answer them. Uh, let me see. Okay, you see over here, towards the end, my exploration factor is so high. Even if the score, okay, this is not a good example. Um, the score is not that great. Like over here, if the score is a discrepancy of 40, 50, okay, there's some, there's some skill. There's a bit of skill here. The score difference is about, the score difference is about 60, 70. And that's quite a big skill. Oh, it's actually performing not too bad, right? Look at that. It's actually... It's actually doing well. Oh. But there's no skill towards the end though. Like everything is doing about the same. Like ideally we want to prioritize this thing here. So later I'll try the exploration factor of of 10. And then we see whether the Monte Carlo search works. I uh, see as I expected towards the end there's no skill at all. When you see this 94 and this is 69, we should prioritize searching here more. But instead, this becomes just everything. Oh, 50 over 1,000. That, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. It's a good sign that this is working. Do you think this can reach 8192? <laughs> can my AI reach 8192? <laughs> Oh man, this is so exciting. Oh, it's doing well. Unexpectedly. It's doing so well. It reached like 60,000 already. Almost 60,000. And then there's a huge skill over here. Because this is 58292 and this... Oh, what happened? Oh. Oh, they reached the end of line. I'm not too sure what's happening, but I think it overprinted. Okay, no biggie. We're just gonna have to wait for it to to finish. Yeah, I'll just go to the toilet for one minute and I'll be back. Hopefully, you have finished, and then we see that you hit a one i two. That's the thing. Yeah. Right, has it finished? Da -da -da -da. Oh, it actually did pretty far. Oh, damn, it ended at 4096. It didn't go 8192. Hi, Murat, long time no see. Yeah, I do hope to stream coding game soon. Yeah, my kid will go to childcare two months time. And then I should be freer to stream more days a week now. <laughs> How are you?
so frustrated. I don't know why, how to set this constant here. So, so maybe I set C. Uh, let's try setting C as one. So this is about Monte Carlo tree search. Yeah, I'm fine also. Like now, now really the the only stuff I stream is probably just game creation. Uh, but recently I've been excited at trying to create this AI to solve two zero four eight, which is this game here. So. I'm using this um, thing called uh, Monte Carlo approach, which is like random moves. And now I'm doing a form of Monte Carlo tree search to see if I can, I can make it better. Like I can easily hit 2048 already with my AI. I'm just trying to hit 8192. Okay, uh, 4096 is also quite easy to hit. Yeah. So now the issue is what's the exploration factor I should use. Okay, let's try exploration factor one. Maybe. Oh, look at that skill. Look at that skill. Skill as in S K E W. Look at that skill. Six. Actually, expiration factor one is it's pretty nice. It's just that you know for stuff like this. You know, we just focus only on one, which may not be a bad thing. Yeah, I mean, if the average score doesn't like go below the average score of the other few, it's actually okay, right? Maybe one is a bit too much, right? <laughs> it's, only, it's only focusing its efforts on one single. Oh, but it does look like it's uh, working pretty well. Yeah, I mean, expansion factor one, it like prioritizes only like the move that gives it the highest returns here. But there's still chance for it to explore other paths as well. Although the chance is pretty low, is it? The skill is a bit too much for exploration factor one. I think one is probably not going to cut it well. Maybe I should try ten. Yeah, later I'll try ten. Yeah, the skill is a bit too much for for an exploration factor one. It's like only focusing on one one single move. When it could possibly try out more of the other moves also. Yeah, well, but it's doing pretty well for exploration factor one. Yeah, it's like going to twenty over thousand. Now I wonder if I can like do double. Like, view console for workbook. Okay, let's uh, duplicate this. Trainer two. So I, I run two notebooks concurrently to save some time. Let my PC burn out a bit, it's fine. Yeah. So let it run this. Now in this second uh, one, I will set my C to be 10. Yeah, uh, this is the one with outs. Okay, so actually we don't run that. I just want to try. Expression factor of 10 and see the skill. Well, the skill is not bad actually. Okay, for the lower tiers, kind of bad for the lower tiers. Hmm. But I, I like the skill. I mean, the fact that there's a skill, it means that we are focusing on the right notes. Like here, 886, we focus more on this. Yeah. And then if let's say you get something, well this could be on Git. Ah yeah yeah sure. After after today I will just put it on my GitHub and then like I'll put the link somewhere. I mean if you want to try it out, um, I still intend to code out a neural network version to solve this game of two zero four eight, like using deep Q networks. So I'll stream that as well. Yeah, uh, live code it. Yeah, but today I will try to do like Monte Carlo tree search only. Yeah, the DQ network one will will take this one this is what my friend did minimax yeah but it didn't really work that well yeah the skill is good at a higher level the skill is good like some moves are 205 some moves maybe the skill is a bit overwhelming 
<laughs> it's like only purely focusing on this. It's not even traveling to this node when it should explore a bit. Because the score is just 10 different. The difference is just 10. Uh, like over here, when it explores both, the difference is like 3. Uh, so maybe uh, expression factor of 10 may be a little too conservative. Maybe I should do 100 for exploration factor. So like any score within a range of 100, you can explore both scores rather than just keeping one. Okay, let's see whether this code, this guy has he run finish. Yeah, as expected, exploration factor of one kind of sucks. Yeah, it doesn't really do it. We just reached 2048, which is not a great score. Let's try exploration factor of 100. Yeah, I've decided not to just use the average of the I don't know, maybe this would still work if if it, if it aimed too high towards the end. Maybe I could I could have an exploration constant rate because the, the game score does increase after a while. Mm. So still thinking whether I want to have like a a schedule to increase the exploration constant. Or I could just set it to be 100. Yeah, you see 100 looks looks decent. I mean, it does look like it's focusing on this tool here and not focusing on this. Awesome. I think 100 is a good number. Empirically, 100 looks good. Yeah, now the only question is whether this, um, this skill of exploration would still work when the base score of the game is high. Uh, in fact, what I could do is, I could uh instead of doing this, I could do like change in score kind of thing. Rather than using the base score here, because this is getting quite huge. Let's see how it goes. Uh, I could consider using change in score as a matrix, as a metric instead of using the total score. But I kind of like the skill here. Look at this one four two, four five six nine three, which is like almost a hundred greater than five six two two. So this skill here is good. I wonder if this will be enough to get A192. Okay, let's see the trainer 2 here. This one using exploration factor of 10. What is my score? Oh, it's still doing 2044. It's not that great, right? <laughs> exploration factor of 10. Yeah, so this is like more like hyperparameter tuning already right now. Okay, so I, I, I have this feeling that this might actually work if I were to take this and divide by 100. Let's see whether this works. So to, so this is packed to the average score. So the experiment factor will increase over time to match um, the score increase. It's not bad actually. Yeah, look at that skill. I like it. I like it. Yeah, so actually maybe maybe this one will be a good a better approach than just having a constant exploration factor. You know, I don't even know which one is better. I'm just trying it out. <laughs> yeah, this kind kind of cool, yeah, like how you can use this heuristic to tune. It's like training neural networks, I guess. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I know Murat recently also did this traveling salesman problem where you know you try to connect nodes together in a graph. Yeah, I read this from an algo book. Yeah, I was quite curious. So I implemented like like uh one is using greedy search, one is using perturbations and stuff, then simulated annealing. Quite cool, you know. Yeah, I intend to write a blog post on this soon. But first I'll write a blog post on 2048. <laughs> So many interesting things, yeah. You just need to look at the easy problems and and like not look at too much math, yeah. Because once you look at more math, it can kind of kills your interest. Because like, yeah, genetic algo works as well if you can encode the right genes to um to encode the graph problem. Yeah, recently I've been interested in this thing called graph neural networks. So I want to see whether graph neural networks can solve this traveling salesman problem as well. So a graph neural networks is basically a neural network that is in the form of graph, and then your nodes and your edges 
you keep repeating some form of operation on your nodes based on your adjacent nodes and your edges. So something that I'm looking into nowadays, uh, the graph neural networks. No, it's still at 2048. Oh man. Even after I did exploit, exploit, it didn't work. I think I'll need like probably another stream to try to get it on I2. Yeah. I don't know whether it's boring to watch. I mean, I'm just tuning my hybrid parameters here right now. <laughs> it's pretty agonizing. Let's. I think maybe um, pegging it to the average Monte Carlo score it, it might work better. So let's see this one where they go to. Has it died? Oh, it died at 1024. Oh man. Yeah, this factor is very important. So it turns out that 100 might be a bit too much. Maybe 20. Maybe I'll try 20 for this. 1 divided by 20. Then maybe over here I do 50. I do 50 for this. Uh, genetic algos are, are quite good, but uh, genetic algo, the issue is that um, sometimes when you do your genetic recombination and uh, like mutation, sometimes you might lose your original solution. Yeah. <laughs> so it's good to save a backup of the best possible, pop uh, best pop possible individual as you go through the generations to prevent like when the two best individuals meet, the offspring may not be as good. Yeah, so like in, in real life, if you look at um, how organisms evolve, uh, the parents don't survive to the next generation. So it's kind of a risk there that uh, evolution is doing um, by just uh, not letting the parent generation with the, with the traits live on. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know, but if you were to use uh, genetic algo for optimization, I kind of prefer the approach where your parents can still live on also, so that you keep the best possible solution over the generations. Okay, so I'm I'm just this my last try. Okay, after that I, I will have a good night's rest and I think about how to set this exploration constant to, uh, to try to exploit and ex explore and exploit well here, in order to get a one nine two. Or maybe even this approach may not be sufficient to get A192. I mean, I wouldn't know until I try. Yeah, but 4096 is uh is possible. It's pretty easily done actually. Yeah, in fact, we just increase the number of tries. We can probably get 4096 without doing this exploit exploit already. This is just an optimization. Yeah. Maybe I could just you know use the initial AI. This one. I just change this to maybe 200. And then we see whether this can solve to eight one nine two in this um two zero four eight problem. Yeah. So here I'm just using the um average of the. You know, initially I tried like five moves per. Five tries per move. I could probably increase the initial tries number here to give a better estimate, and here is the, the tries to prioritize after that. Uh, so over here what we do is. We pack the exploration constant to some uh, factor of the average score in the initial tries, so that um, if there's any difference from the average, yeah. So like over here, this W i over N i, okay. The average is about zero point five, mm. but actually this C is packed to one usually, like so it's actually packed to the max of this thing here. Mm. So maybe I should use max instead of average. If you were to do this max, but if I were to use max, I might explore a bit too much. Yeah, if I were to use this C as my max for the exploit, might be a bit too much. But I used this successfully, and like in alpha zero, C was one, and it worked. So, yeah. 
Oh yeah, Murat, by the way, I, I also put an Alpha Zero out for a tic tac game. <laughs> yeah, and it worked. I was quite happy about it. Oh yeah, sure thing. Yep, see you next time. Yeah, bye. Bye, Murat. Oh, it's actually working quite well. Uh, this is about tuning already. Yeah, I guess if I tune it better, I should be able to hit it. Hit one nine two. I hope. Oh no, it's still at two zero four eight. <laughs> oh, this one looks more. This one looks more promising. What what did I do here? That was the difference. This was 50, that was 20. Maybe this one is a bit too low. Yeah. You know, maybe I could just make the exploration vector be the initial bot state. Or max one, and then the initial bot state, which is the current state one. I could also make the C be that. So my initial C will be the score of the initial bot. One, three, two. Yeah, actually this this split is not bad. Yeah, uh, using the score of the initial bot we could actually contain this. Or I could make the average score. I could minus off the initial bot so then it will not be so big. Yeah. There are some optimizations I could do. Like a few optimizations I could do and I just don't have enough time to do all of them right here tonight. Yeah, uh, this is not very good. See towards the end all the all the number of tries are about equal. This is not what we want. Oh, but this on the other hand is doing quite well. Oh, okay. Speak of the devil, it, it, it crashed. Oh, but it hit 4096. It hit 4096. That's uh, it's not too bad. <laughs> okay, I guess uh, I'll need to tinker around with this a bit more. I will go and try out various settings over the day tomorrow. And I see what works. You know, yeah, this part of the thing is called hyperparameter tuning. So I need to find out a good way to do this C. Okay, and this C may be uh it may be done um based on the initial score itself because this score over here increases as the game goes. So um unless I could figure out a way to pack this score to a value of one, and then I could set C to be one with this score here. Yeah, so there's some stuff that I need to think about and as of now, I am not too certain how to pack this uh, exploration parameter. Yeah. And it's very important to set the right parameter so that you explore the right thing. If you set your C too high, you essentially will do a uniform uh, prioritization for all nodes. But if you set your C too low, then you only prioritize the nodes that are, or rather the moves that are having the highest value. So it's very important to set this exploration constant to be a very uh, well-balanced one yeah, in order to, to, to do well. Oh, this is still working. Yeah, see, towards the end, if we set the exploration factor to be the score of the initial bot, we will end up with all moves being evaluated almost equally, and that's not what we want. But it does look like if almost are evaluated equally, it can reach quite a far. <laughs> it can reach quite far. Maybe, maybe I might be misguided in trying to do an exploit exploit. Maybe just having like equal samples. Actually, this is not bad. You see, it prioritizes this few more than this, but it's still about equal number because it's not clearly bad yet. It's doing pretty well actually. Thinking whether I should wait for this thing to be done, then I end the stream, or I end the stream now. 
Interesting. I have lots of experimentation to do tomorrow. <laughs> oh well. Oh, I um, this is not good. Yeah, so actually both are. Uh, this is slightly better. Pegging it to the average, so there might be something to do with having this C peg to the average of this term on the left. Yeah, I have to go and do some research to find out more. Seems to be the case. And yeah, this is a good time to end the stream here. So now we can see that uh, 4096 is attainable. But we haven't reached the, the holy grail of 8192 yet. I think 8192 is really hard to get. Yeah, and I think it should be possible. It should be possible. I mean, that's, that's a goal I set for myself. I'll get 8192 using this AI, using the AI I could. I think it's possible. I mean, maybe I use deep neural networks methods. It, it might work better. At least it can like generalize the bot state better. Whether it can work better or not, I don't know. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Thanks everyone for watching and catch you around soon. Bye.